Alrighty guys, today we are getting rid of all of our 8.1 parts. Not like to sell them or to not have them ever again, but we're actually getting ready to crate them up and ship them to the machine shop so I can actually put this thing together because right now there's a lot of stuff that we need to change in this PSI 8.8 .8 block before I fill it with all these goodies that I got from Raylar. Um, so here's the block, you guys have probably seen it before. Um, I need to have it bored out. We're gonna line hone it. We're gonna, let's see, I'm probably gonna enlarge some of the fasteners in this area. Um, but anyway, that's machine work. That's not stuff I have the capability to do here in my little two and a half, three car garage. So it needs to go to a proper machine shop. I'm actually gonna have Hank Slocum, the one that sourced me this extra 8.1 block. I'm gonna have him do all the work on it. He's got a machine shop that he works at. Um, down in California, so I need to get all the parts to him, and I don't feel like driving to California. Um, so this is a traditional pallet right there, and when I had, so just talking about shipping for a second, when I had all the parts from Raylar shipped from them to me, I had to arrange the shipping, and it needed to be a residential, what do you call it, like a lift gate service truck, you know, an LTL pallet on a lift gate, which they definitely nail you for the fees if you need a lift gate to drop a pallet off. It cost me $800 to get that thing shipped from California to Utah. Um, they got it here really quickly, but I think it was Old Dominion. Yeah, 800 bucks, and I didn't really, I don't wanna spend that much money every time I need a pallet move. So um, when Hank actually sent me the spare engine, he had me go pick it up at a Fastenal store, and I had no idea you can actually do this, but, Fastenal has something called Blue Lane Freight. Um, totally not a sponsored post. This is just something that's really handy and I figured I'd share it with you guys. So if you can get your pallet to a Fastenal store, um, you know, in the back of your pickup, something that they can grab it with a forklift, they will ship it to another Fastenal store. So Hank will go down to his local Fastenal and pick up this pallet that I'm about to prepare and send off. Um, and they gave me a quote for 160 bucks. So I was like, holy crap, we have got to do this. But the only caveat is if you want to have the shipment insured, they have limits to the value, which I'm okay if we go up to the limit. I think they have like a $5,000 insurance that they'll put on us. I don't think they're, the only reason I'd really need the insurance is if they're going to like lose this whole pallet of parts. Uh, but uh, we just need to protect it from damage. So in order to have that insurance on there, they need to have it in a, basically they say like a plywood crate. So I have a pallet right here and I've got enough space. I am gonna send Hank back this 8.1 blocks. I'm gonna have two engine blocks, you know, crank, rods, pistons, and a set of cylinder heads. Um, I got plenty of space on here. I just need to build some two by four structure around it, put some plywood walls and a top on it. And that's where we're gonna to start today's upload. So I'm gonna to head to Home Depot real quick or Lowe's or whatever's closest. Um, and then I'll show you guys actually, before we ship it off, I'll show you the pistons because that was the one thing that we were waiting on. And it is a custom spec piston. And I, I deviated a little bit from what Raylar normally sells. And I'll explain all that and, you know, before we send it off. And on top of that, I don't know how much time we're gonna to have today, but I do have the big blue Suburban back in the shop. Um, a like this spring, actually, it's been a while, I swapped out the rear 14 bolt for a wider Dana 70 to correct the stance, but we also gained limited slip and rear disc brakes. These are really, really nice brakes, um, two piston calipers out back. So the back end of this thing is all fresh and brand new. And the front end, I haven't touched yet. We still have stock brakes and high mileage worn out suspension parts. So um, I got a whole bunch of stuff to correct this. We're actually gonna be installing GMT 800 suspension and hubs and brakes and all that good stuff up front. And I have all the parts in the back here. They've actually been sitting in here for, I've had this stuff for months. I just haven't got around to it yet. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing at some point in the future. Uh, you will need some parts to make it happen. This is probably key to doing the conversion right here. Uh, I don't know if we're actually gonna to get to this today, but anyway, I've been kind of messing around on that. Uh, let's see, future plans for the Suburban. I don't know what I wanna do with it, guys. Originally, I bought this thing because I wanted to do a big block Suburban Lanch. Um, you can watch the video on that if you want more details, but I'm not doing that now. So I don't know what I want to do with it. I don't really love the look of a Suburban. So my thought is, and maybe if you have one of these, help me out, send me a message. Um, I'm thinking about finding a 1500 two-door Tahoe, you know, Blazer Tahoe, whatever you want to call it, uh, two-door Yukon. I think they look really, really awesome. And I'm thinking about transplanting all of the three-quarter ton driveline stuff into one of those, whether I need to do a frame swap or, or whatever it is. 
That's kind of like the running idea that I have in my brain right now. And I don't have enough time to do it. I have way too many other projects right now. I still need to sell that stupid BMW E39. So if you want one of those, um, send me a message. I've got it for sale. I'll let it go for cheap. I just need to get it out of my driveway. Um, maybe trade for a blazer, but if I had a blazer, I wouldn't make that trade. But anyway, uh, yeah, we're rambling at this point. So uh, that's just a quick update on the Suburban. I, I like this truck a lot. I don't, I just, I don't love the whole Suburban look. I want to make it something different, something custom. And I think an eight lug three quarter ton uh, Blazer would just be really awesome, especially with a big block 4L80 and an MP241. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna run to Home Depot real quick. I'll be back and we'll start building the crate. Then we'll look at some pistons. Alrighty guys, like a lot of my projects, this has kind of turned out to be something that's like way more overkill than it really has to be. But 
They said they wanted a crate, so we're going to build them a crate. Um, just kind of give you an idea of what we're actually doing. Uh, this little frame structure right here, this is actually where the two engine blocks are going to sit on, one on this side, one on that side. Uh, of course, I took some measurements and it'll fit one perfectly kind of there and there. And this is kind of how it's going to sit. So I have the two by four standing on end and it'll sit right between the main caps and it'll give plenty of clearance so the bolts don't actually hit the pallet that's underneath. And I'll have them spaced so they almost touch the main caps like that and on the far side so the block actually can't slide front to back and then when i'm done i'll probably have like another little two by four i block like you know something just like this so it actually can't slide side to side um, then we'll strap it down to the pallet the ends here's kind of how those are going to work um, you can see i left a notch here that's going to be where the one two by four goes along this edge here and <clears throat> I left the plywood hang out over the edge just a little bit and that's because it's going to go over that 2x4 down there and uh, we're going to screw it in on the very bottom edge into that 2x4 that is laying right there on the pallet. So um, yeah, that is how the crate is going to look and I actually, I think I changed the design a little bit from when I planned this out. So I'm actually like two or three 2x4 short so I got to go back to Lowe's. Uh, buy a couple more two by fours, but then I'll I'll just kind of speed through that and I'll pick it up and when we have the crate, it's pretty much done. All right, guys, this is a little while later. I have all the lumber I needed. In total, it's cost me about a hundred bucks for two sheets of plywood and I forget, I think like seven two by fours I needed to make this. Yeah, it's probably a little bit overkill, but you never know with shipping, you know, the stuff might get kind of bounced around a little bit. So I wanted to protect everything um, just to make sure everything is safe. Anyhow, uh, the only bad part about building a crate like this at home because I don't have a forklift and I don't want to pay for lift gate service is I am going to have to manually load everything in the truck. So I'll basically put the pallet in flat. I'll use the cherry picker to stack the blocks up on there and then I'll assemble the crate kind of around everything. And then once I get to fasten, I'll, they'll be able to just, you know, I'll drop the tailgate, they'll come on with their forklift and pick everything up. So that's not a big deal on that end, but loading it up here at home, I'm just gonna have to do it one at a time. But here's kind of the finished product minus the lid. That's all built. I just will, you know, screw it on there once everything is loaded up. I do have the two blocks in and I just kind of mocked it up here to make sure I have plenty of room for everything. I do have a piece of plywood. This is like three eighths just kind of stuck in between the middle so they don't, you know, jostle into each other and have metal on metal contact. And the only thing left to do is I'm going to screw a couple of two by fours down on the bottom of the framework on this side and on this side just to make sure the blocks can't shift side to side. Then we'll wrap everything with a big ratchet strap just to kind of keep it secure. And then I've got plenty of room over here to stack. You know, the cylinder has the crankshaft, connecting rods, pistons, and all that good stuff. Um, the box dimensions, just if you're curious, 40 by 48. Uh, it's 24 tall. And yeah, that is my shipping container. It just goes onto a standard pallet. Likely it is way overkill, but peace of mind, right? What's 100 bucks in materials these days? You can't freaking fill up your truck with gas for 100 bucks. So. Uh, whatever. Anyway, I wanted to show you guys the pistons because that was kind of like the last piece of the puzzle before we get this thing, you know, built. And when you get a piston from Raylar, he, most of the stuff he builds is for like a naturally aspirated application. So he normally would sell a flat top piston. Um, with the stuff that we're putting together, that would leave a compression ratio somewhere in the neighborhood of like, I think 10.1 or 10.2 to one, which is good if you want to make, you know, naturally aspirated power, you get a street motor, that's a perfect compression ratio. And I probably could throw a turbo on there, but that does kind of with a little bit higher compression ratio, it does narrow your tuning window, you know, so you might have to run E85 or, you know, strictly race gas, which I didn't want to do. I, my target goal for compression on this motor was like nine and a half to one. And the exact compression ratio, I've got this calculator here is 
right over here, 9.49 to 1. Uh, so that, as far as I'm concerned, is pretty darn close. But to get there, here's what we had to do. Um, I had to spec this a little bit differently. The piston height or compression height, that is the distance from the center of the wrist pin to the top. That is 1.270 inches. Um, it's a 6700 connecting rod. I'm allowing 40 thousandths for head gasket just for quench. Uh, but this should have the piston in the hole exactly zero inches um, with 40 thousandths of quench considering the 40 thousandths head gasket right there. Uh, now deck height, let's talk about that for a second because as you can see here I have listed 10 to 20. Uh, a traditional big block Chevy, kind of like what we have in the Suburban, a Gen 6, you know, your Mark 5s, those usually had a deck height of 9.800 inches. A tall deck, you know, they use those in some industrial applications. Uh, some crate motors used a tall deck. I think like the, the new 632 is probably a 10200 tall deck. Um, the, what was the other one, the, not the 547, the, uh, the 572, I think that was also a 10200 Mark 5 tall deck. I'm not sure on the crate motor specs, but basically that's to say GM used two deck sizes, a 9800 and a 10200, except for the Gen 7. That's a metric block. It uses some standard fastener sizes, some um, standard tolerances, but a lot of stuff is metric as well. This one actually comes out to be, depending on which one you get and which one you measure, they're roughly 10 to 40. You know, um, Hank says some measure 10 to 35, 10 to 42, but basically they're about for round number's sake, 40 thousandths taller and the deck height, once again, from the center of the crankshaft to the surface here. Um, we are gonna mill this one because they're a little bit taller. I'm gonna mill it down to 10 to 20. So um, as far as the operations on the block, just to, I don't wanna give too much away because I think some of the stuff we're doing is pretty cool and kind of unique, but uh, we're going to bore and hone it. We're gonna deck it. I am gonna upgrade the fasteners on the mains right there. Um, we're gonna upgrade those to ARP studs, which means we need to line hone it. Uh, and there's a few other things, like I said up top, we're actually gonna, we're gonna mess around up there as well. So um, that's kind of what you have to look forward to. I have no idea how long the machine process is gonna take, but hopefully, I don't know, maybe four to six weeks later, we'll have the stuff back here at home and I can start assembly on this 547 cubic inch monster. Remember that's just about, it's like 8.99 liters, a uh, nine liter big block. Um, and yeah, we are shooting for the moon. We, a thousand plus, that's kind of what I'm calling this. Um, maybe we'll make 1,200, maybe we'll make 1,500. I don't know if we'll make 2,000, but uh, I, I certainly know that I would need a larger turbo to do that. But um, I'm going all in, guys. I'm, this is going to end up costing me a ton of money, but it's going to be a ton of fun, and I think it's worth it. So... Um, yeah, we're all ready to ship this stuff out, guys. So thank you for watching. Um, do me a favor, though. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, please click the like button. Uh, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And uh, I'll catch you next time, guys. Thank you once again.